So if you're watching this video, you probably already train jiu-jitsu. And maybe you've noticed it's actually not the easiest sport to get better at. So I decided to make a step-by-step -step guide to try to help speed up the process for you and make it easier to learn. So the first thing to understand is jiu-jitsu, of course it's a physical sport, but it's a largely cerebral sport as well. If you think about it, the difference between you and someone who's much better than you, of course there may be physical differences, maybe someone's in better shape, but really it's their pattern recognition and their ability to make good choices at the right moment. So if you took your current conditioning level and you just took the knowledge and timing of a world-class competitor and you could download it into your head like the movie The Matrix, you would be able to perform really well and win matches. So the real goal, of course, is to increase your conditioning, but it's to actually make your body adapt and understand when is the best time to make a move. A lot of people associate getting better with just going into the gym and getting a lot of hard rounds in. But really, the hard rounds, of course, they help your conditioning. They don't necessarily help your ability at identifying the right times for moves. An analogy I like to think about is imagine if you just had five people and you were going to try to make them become very high level at jiu-jitsu and they had no access to any form of online content or any instruction and they just trained together every day, right? How long would it be until they accidentally discover the idea of an omoplata or how long would it be until they accidentally discover the idea of a matrix or a heel hook, right? So they could train for five years killing themselves every single day going really hard and never make those discoveries. So just by watching one instructional or learning one detail from learning from someone, you can save five years of effort of developing new technique. When you understand this, you understand how important it is to be efficient and smart with your training to speed up the learning process. The next principle to understand is that really all jujitsu is, is a combination of multiple mini positions. It's multiple different skill sets. If you try to understand the mass of an entire jujitsu match, it's very difficult because there's so many different patterns happening. Like you can do a triangle choke, you can hold mount, you can do a matrix, you can finish a heel hook, and all of those things are completely different skill sets. In fact, I would argue there's more in common with soccer and rugby than there is between doing a heel hook and finishing a triangle choke. So in the beginning when you learn, you want to focus on learning separate positions, and as you learn all these different positions, eventually all a normal match is, is a collection of multiple specific positions. So then the big question for you becomes, what position positions should you work on first? So if you don't know what to work on first, the first step in this process is go into the gym and do normal sparring and completely turn your brain off. A lot of people when they go in sparring, they try to like have a game plan or have something on their mind. But when you're in a tournament or if you're doing like a self-defense thing and someone attacks you, you don't have time to think. You cannot be in a match trying to plan out what you're gonna do next. So how you act when you're in a real sparring match and you're just having to fight, that's what your real jiu-jitsu is. That's like what your core knowledge is. So when you don't know where to go in your game, go into the gym and just do a night of normal hard sparring. At the end of that sparring, the most important part, it's not the sparring, but it's your reflection after the sparring. And what you need to do is actually analyze in your matches where you have problems. And that's gonna be different for each person. Maybe you struggle to get out of side control. Maybe you got a triangle choke and you couldn't finish it. You need to identify these problems. Now, realistically, there's gonna be a lot of problems. Most people have tons of they can work on in their game. So you wanna pick the things that are gonna give you the most bang for your buck. If you're new, this is often end point positions. Like if you can't finish a triangle choke or you can't hold mount, then even if you get to the position, you can't control it. So you wanna start at the end positions first. Once you've successfully identified problems that you think are worth working on, then you wanna start specific training. So say the first day you come in and you do hard normal rounds, you identify two or three positions you have a problem. For an example, we could use finishing a triangle choke and escaping side control. Now you want to get with a partner and start in that position and spar from there. If you get out of side control, stop. If they hold you in side control and tap you or progress to mount, stop reset, go back. This makes you focus on the small position that is way easier to break down than the jiu-jitsu as a whole. Of course, even working on this, it's gonna be really difficult. There's gonna be positions you just don't know what to do. And this leads to the next thing, which is, you need to be using instructionals and you need to be using competition footage to help speed up the process. Like the analogy I used before, how long would it take people to discover the omoplata if they weren't
aren't already taught it, it's gonna take you a long time to solve some of these problems. So your, your way of improving way faster than other people will be about your ability to borrow the ladder from what those before you have done to speed up the process. So when you identify a position that you're struggling in, get a lot of video on that problem, right? And that can be both competition footage or instructional to give you ideas of what you need to be doing in the position. Now you need to balance the feedback between specific sparring in the position and watching the instructional. If someone in an instructional shows a side control escape, that's great, but if you specific spar in the position and your opponent is holding you slightly different than what the person in the instructional is showing, then what they showed is not gonna work. So you need the real feedback of starting in the position and identifying the problems of where their hands are, what they're doing, and then seeking out answers for those problems via it in the instructional or competition footage. Often in instructionals, the person may not cover the problem you have, and that's often where instructionals can be great, or asking a coach. Next, another major thing is drop the idea of having a game. A lot of people imagine their jiu-jitsu game like it's like something, something they're engineering, like a game they're designing and it all has to fit together. But that's not really a good way to look at it because whatever your skill level is, you want to be significantly higher than that. And with your current level, you can't really make good decisions about what your game should look like when you're more advanced. So an example would be, imagine if a white belt came in and you asked them, what do you want your game to look like 10 years from now? They can't have an education decision on that. They don't know how positions work. They don't even know what all guards there are or what all passes they are, right? So instead you focus on developing general knowledge and as you have more general knowledge, you'll be able to combine things in ways that make sense. But whatever your current level is, you won't be able to know what you can do until you have that future knowledge. So like I said before, the goal is to do regular sparring, identify problem positions, work on them. Additionally, if you see positions that you know other people are really successful with, even if it's not a problem in your game, but you think it's a worthwhile skill to develop, then focus on that and specific training it. But the main thing is that you're developing specific training ability in these positions. Once you learn enough of them, eventually all a regular match is, is a collection of all of those positions. If you take someone brand new and you send them into normal sparring, it's too complex. If you play chess, even if you have the world's best supercomputer, the most powerful AI engine in the world, cannot tell you what the best first move in chess would be. I would argue jujitsu is even more complicated than chess because at least chess you can repeat the positions. In jujitsu every opponent is different. They have different strength levels, different flexibility levels, their gi can be cut different, they can respond differently. There's so many different variables so you cannot always calculate it. So it helps so much to break things down into small positions that you can break down and eventually all of it will come together. Finally, after you've worked these positions and you've evolved in them in your specific training, training, go back to regular training and do hard normal rounds and turn your brain off. This is a very important concept. A lot of people, they get so analytical and that's good. That's what makes you technical, but you cannot do that during normal sparring. In normal sparring, you need to turn your brain off and trust that whatever your body gives you at that moment is the best thing you can do because then you'll react fast. If you freeze, you won't act fast enough for the moves to work. An analogy I like to use, it's like if you try to jump, the technique of jumping makes sense. You go, you bend your legs, you exert force, you go in the air. But if you do it too slow, even if you do the technique correct, you won't go in the air because it requires a certain amount of force to be able to jump in the air. And technique is the same way. If there's a position and you make the right choice of technique, but you do it too slow, it still won't work. So it's more important that during a regular round you move fast and hard and trust that what your brain gave you in that moment is the best thing you could have done. Of course, you'll make bad decisions and as you identify those things, then when you go into specific training later or the next day, that's the time to analyze what you're doing and try to reprogram your brain. So you want that cycle of going into normal rolling, uh, turning your brain off, getting real live feedback on what your responses are, and then using specific training to reprogram the muscle memory in different positions and you continue that loop. Eventually you'll find that all the normal roles turn into is a combination of the specific training and if you do that long enough you'll have a good idea of what you're doing all the time. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the concept talks, please leave a comment and let me know what other questions you'd like to see me talk about in the future. And as always, if you like the content, like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.